up on this side of the screen you'll see a bunch of timestamps with, um, with different topics that I'll be talking about in the video. Uh, feel free to jump to the bit that interests you. So before I start, it's, it's probably really important to, to understand that everything I say in this video is my own view. It's even when I'm presenting facts and uh, you know events, things that happened, it's still through my own lens. Right, so I've racked up about 10,000 kilometers in the, in, the, um, in the Land Cruiser and about 5,000 of that has been on a trip to the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia. First thing to talk, oh, now I'm getting really wet. I'm just gonna get another jumper. Oh, there we go, my trusty dryer bone. First thing I'll talk about is the good, uh, the good bits. So, uh, one of the reasons we purchased uh, the 300 series is for towing. The, the Tanami X15 that we have uh, is rated to, to weigh up to three tons when it's fully laden. To be able to tow that safely and comfortably without, without getting really fatigued, um, I was after something with, with you know that needs a, that has a fair bit of power. So I won't get into the whole GCM, GVM, GTM discussion. But suffice to say, the 300 series has a uh, gross combined mass, permissible gross combined mass of 6.7 tons, which means that if you load this vehicle up to its full GVM of, I think it's 3.3 tons, I'll put it down here, it can still legally tow 3.5 tons. So comfort's another one, uh, comfort's another reason that I really love the 300 series. Um, I had a 100 series Land or 105, an FZJ 105, so that's a petrol 105 series Land Cruiser, that's the 100 series with the solid axle in front. Um, quite a comfortable vehicle. When looking to upgrade it, our options were effectively a 300 series Land Cruiser, a Land Rover Defender, or a 79 series. But the, um, the 79 series, for our purposes, um, as a small family, uh, the 300 series just blows the 79 out of the water in that sense. So we do need to use it as a day-to-day -day vehicle as well. So it needs to do more crawling duties as well as touring duties. One of the other reasons we bought this car is cost. So we were actually in the market for a 200 series, a used 200 series Land Cruiser, uh, when we decided we'd bite the bullet and, and uh, go for the 300 series. Um, at that at that stage, it was the cheapest solution. So there there were no 200 series Land Cruisers for um, in nothing reasonable under 120, 130 thousand dollars. The GX Land Cruiser on road basically costs 100 thousand dollars. Australia goes absolutely nuts for Land Cruisers, which is great when you're trying to modify them. So uh, the vehicle will be going into ARB very shortly for um, to fit a number of accessories to the car and if I have problem with a worn winch or a ARB compressor or things like that you can go back to the manufacturer and go hey you know uh, give us some help um, it's the same thing kind of with a Land Cruiser with the mods that you have for it you know the, the, you can purchase that bracket and know that it's gonna fit and that was a really strong selling point for us now let's talk about the bad things about this car or um, the things that I don't like. So again, things that I don't like about the car personally. So the first one's got to be the tailgate. If you've watched any reviews on this car, uh, I think just about everyone has said it or has mentioned it. I've mentioned it in my previous videos. I think I probably mentioned it in two of my videos and I think I have two or three videos out on this car already is the fact that there's no tailgate. To date, all sort of upper large Land Cruisers, so the, the, the big boys, have all had a drop down tailgate. It's just such a nice little practical accessory in a vehicle. Um, and the other thing that that does is not just the, the drop down section, but also the, the lift up section. So on my 100 series, you could... It beeps at you for everything. The Land Cruiser beeps when the doors open, if uh, it's on set to accessory and the doors are open, for some reason it just beeps. I've tried, you meant to be able to open and close the door and it stops, and it, it beeps for a different reason. There, there, there's always something that this car is beeping at. Put it all off, like just give me a little notification, maybe one ping, you know, hey, you've left your keys in the car. Oh, look, the window's open. One ping. 
It's more than enough. Eaten by mosquitoes. One of the other things that, that I don't like about the vehicle is the lane departure assist. Now the system is not too bad. It's, it's a little bit annoying. It, it, it's quite conservative. It keeps you quite far away from the line. The, that, it's not so bad in itself, but the moment you have a van behind you, I feel like it's dangerous. P pulling your car out of plane, you know, if you have your, your van behind you um, and it's directly behind the vehicle and then using the brakes to pull that out of, so out of the direction that it's moving in rather than using the steering, to me feels risky. So when I'm towing, I just put it off. So there's two things uh, on, the, on the cruiser that um, are bad in my opinion. The first is we're, we're currently experiencing a, a well-known issue, predominantly, uh, as far as I can tell, only when you are towing and the car is on an incline or an uphill. It's like it makes like a turbo fluttering sound. So what happens is the, the vehicle will, will start surging. What happens then, particularly if you're on cruise, if you're using the cruise control, what it does is it puts its foot down. So it applies more throttle, just revs. So if you're at the moment, uh, the, I have not yet had that resolved um, at its next service, which will be in a month or so, ask them to, to rectify that. On our recent South Australia trip, we we're driving through a puddle. So about 300 mil of water, uh, not overly salty or anything like that. And the dash lit up. What happened, I'm assuming, is that we've got, uh, we've got some grime or some dirt or something into one of the ABS sensors, and that faulted out the ABS system, which was quite interesting. Um, I've had that before. I have had ABS uh, sensors fail on other vehicles before, particularly a VW Amarok. You wash down the brakes, uh, clean off the sensors, and Bob's your uncle, everything's fine. I washed the car thoroughly. I went to a, uh, visited a DIY car wash, Ended up visiting uh, Port Lincoln Toyota, who was fantastic. They helped me within 24 hours. Uh, kudos to the guys at uh, Port Lincoln Toyota. Real shout out to you guys. And if you want to see the rest of our South Australia trip, uh, you want to see the fun bits of our South Australia trip, uh, head on over to our channel or one of the videos should come up just here or here somewhere. Otherwise, see you next time.